Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris, this is Taylor Welding, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to save money building fence corners, uh, a way to brace your fence without using H braces. Just by looking at it, you probably know. You got your main pole, and you've got a brace here that goes in the ground two foot, and you got a brace here on a 45 that goes in the ground two foot. I made some templates so it's easy to weld. It's easy to cut, depending on how good your pipe is. If you get the templates just right, uh, it's very easy to do. You know, just a simple cut and a simple weld. It, it didn't take me a couple minutes to weld this out, and I'm going to do one for you in just a second. So, before we get going, please hit the like button. It helps me. And subscribe if you like this kind of content. We're going to do this with a torch first, and then we're going to do it with a plasma cutter because usually this pipe has so much crap inside of it. This is oil fill pipe, two and seven eighths. If you've ever dealt with it, you know how it is. Plasma cutter seems to do better, uh, blowing through rust and crap on the inside. I prefer a torch because that's what I'm used to. Uh, so we're gonna use it first. And I'll give you all the tips I know and that's what a lot of you have to work with. And then we'll also use the plasma cutter. Go and cut a 22 and a half on this piece of pipe. It's working out. We're just using the pieces that work out. If these are not two foot, because two foot goes on the ground, if it's an inch off, it's not a big deal. So I spent last night laying this out to try to get it to fit perfect. I don't want to fight these. He's got a bunch of them to do. He's a good friend of mine. And when your good friend comes to you and says, hey, you know, I got a bunch of these to build. I, I want to pay you but you'd like to do it for free, you know? You'd like to do it for nothing. The best thing you can do is try to make it fast. Try to make it um, as quick as possible, and then you don't have to charge them as much, you know? Because you gotta get paid for your time. Otherwise, you can just spend your time doing something else. So I gave him the first one for free, because it took me a while to do, and he's my friend. The next, I'm gonna charge him by the hour. And I, you just have to. So I went, I spent my time making these templates perfect that I'll have forever. And it took a minute. I mean, it doesn't seem like it, but that is a, it's like a double compound miter on that. And this is one side. But you're gonna be able to see how easy it is once you get it all laid out and right. How do you get going? Check the inside of your pipe. Uh, this is actually really clean. It's still got some, some rust in it and stuff. It's not gonna cut the best with a torch. It'll cut better with a plasma cutter, probably. I'm gonna cut one side with a torch and the other side with a plasma cutter and just kind of show you how it goes. And I'll give you the tip I know along the way. If I'm marking out something else other than this two and seven eighths that's all pitted and rusty, I would use the white out. White out is awesome for marking on metal. The problem is when you're marking on this rusty pipe, that rust gets in there. It gets in that little, the little end on the whiteout pin and it won't work anymore. So go back to the good old trusty soapstone. This should be one cut with zero grinding. On the other end, we're gonna cut a 22 and a half. <clears throat> The 22 and a half, you can move that dude all around and it's not gonna matter. You're not gonna really know unless it's way out. And it's going in the ground. The only thing sticking out is very little. So mark that in first, get the 22 and a half. We'll cut it in the chop saw. And then we're gonna do uh, two of these. And we'll weld it together. It's really that simple. You got an eight foot, two six footers with a compound miter on one and two two footers with a 22 and a half. You're trying to stay straight with the pipe. You're trying to stay completely straight. Fight me a little bit. And 
sometimes you'll notice I start here because where I left off is already hot because it wants to melt itself back together. And I could turn my torch down just a little bit. Spitting back at you, just keep going. Don't, don't try to sit there very long. That's it. Now, most people would grind that. If you'll just take a hammer and that slag's on the edge, and yes, you can grind it if you want it absolutely perfect. I hate grinding. So get your safety glasses on and just kind of get the edges and it'll pop off. That's it. I'm welding that. It's over. Cleanup's done. And I'm going to weld it with a MIG gun too. Even with all the rust and a little bit of slag, it'll be fine. It's a fence post. Now we're going to jam this side in the chop saw. If you don't have a chop saw, you can put your 22 and a half wrap around uh, on this and cut it the same way. While he's lining it up, it's really helpful if you have somebody over here. If you don't have somebody back here, you can walk over here and look, but this needs to be, you know, right. So he can cut it the same way down there. You know, this is kind of a bastard fit up. It's kind of crazy, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, that 22 and a half, you can roll it around. Nobody's going to know the difference. So we're going to use the little Arc Captain Plasma Cutter. I have really been impressed with this thing. It's really done a good job. We use it quite often. But there is a link in the description if you're interested. Remember, one of the six footers only get the corner coat, not the compound coat. I really don't, I prefer the other template that I'm gonna build. I actually worked on it today. This one does have some crap in it. Yeah, this would be a good one for the plasma cutter. This will make it a lot faster. But these templates are Lexan. Guys, if you're making templates, this Lexan lasts forever. It doesn't have memory. You can hold, you can roll them up and it's, it comes right back. It's a little bit expensive, but it's right there because it's cardboard you can get to disintegrate in a year or two. And I've had that happen several times. So I just started making my own. And the ones you make are way better. If you'll spend the time to get out there and, and really hone it in, it's your template. Oh yeah, see, I'm grabbing the torch. I love my torch. Thanks, Joey. But you gotta make sure, look here. Just that little bit of, little bit of stuff right there will screw up your airflow. Keep it straight. We know the template's right as long as we cut it straight. If you don't cut it straight, it ain't gonna be right. Okay, so we've got the parts. 
on our big table. If you don't have a table, jack stands will work fine. Um, just put a jack stand here and here and one over there if you're using jack stands and you can maneuver this around without jack on the jack stand. But we're fortunate enough to have a table that my good buddy gave me. Gave me a table. Hasn't asked for anything in return, just a good friend. It's one of my favorite tools actually. Now we've, we've got our regular 45 cope. We haven't even hit it with a hammer yet. Probably should hit it with a hammer. But for the sake of the video, and what we're trying to accomplish is building these fast. That's the one we cut with a plasma torch and we haven't touched it. We're gonna stick it up 22, I believe it's right, 22 inches down from the top. Doesn't matter as long as you're making them the same. 22, 23, it's a corner post, it doesn't matter too much, but I'd like to try to make them the same. So we're at 22 inches here. Then you're gonna take your, and this one is Parallel with the table. Take your square, run it up here, and there's your 45, right there. Anybody could weld that. You get your 22 and a half. Ground this rusty jump. Okay. Now, after that square, you can look down the table or you can use your speed square to dial it in or you can just weld it because it's pretty freaking close. Keep it square with the table, down one side. And really, if you had a welding table that you didn't care about or a jack stand, you could just put a little tack right here because this is going to want to pull it one way or another. Oh, it's close. So if you got a clamp that's a little bit to one side, you can tighten her up. Okay. Here's our cope side that we've only cut and hit with a hammer. And really, you want these tops to be the same. And that is, uh, it's good. That's it. I did want to show you how much of this crap was sticking to the end of this. It's magnetized. Oil field pipe is like that sometimes. If it's not too bad, it will weld just fine. So just wipe it off, don't worry about it. You'll know if it's too bad. I've seen it so bad where nothing worked. And wrapping your leads around it doesn't help either. I've never had that work. I've had people tell me that. And if your fit is super tight right here, like that's, you're not gonna be able to get any penetration on that rust. So scoot it back just a little bit, create you a little gap because you really wanna weld on the, on the clean inside. That's it, this thing's done. All I need to do is weld it up. I'm not very familiar with MIG guns as far as my welding career, but uh, the way a MIG gun welds this the settings on the Miller 252 are 17.8 and 216. Uh, that seems to weld most anything, and it welds this really good. It's hard wire with gas. It's not flux core. That's why I'm saying it really shocked me how good it welds this stuff.
all we can get to here. Well, the 22 and a halves out real quick. And that's it, guys. Oh, I got a cap I need to put on the end. But we're really close to being finished. It's just amazing how it doesn't take. When everything fits good, it's fun. You know, and you can see how that wire gets down in there and really welds inside. We're getting a lot of penetration. I'm trying to get that wire all the way in there. Instead of going up hill, I'm come down. Cap, do we have a cap? On the cap, I'm fortunate enough to have a plasma table. Uh, you can cut these out with a torch. You could orange peel this if you wanted to. Um, you could buy little caps to go on the end. But if you're gonna cut them, cut them just a little bit short. These are two and three quarters, two and seven eighths pipe. Gives you a little bit of meat to weld to. So a little bit thinner. So what he'll do is he'll bury these to here. His fence is five foot, which would be here. And then he'll have a place to put a hot wire on top. This is for his goats. And that's a simple fix to a corner. Guys, thank you for being here. If you made it to the end of the video, um, let me know what I could have done different. Leave me a comment. What would be better? Is MIG gun and this rusty metal going to break later? Is it not going to matter because it's just a corner to a fence? You know, <laughs> That's where I'm at. I could have done a lot more on the prep. I get it. But I also understand we did so much on the fit up that this dude is super solid. I don't think it'll ever go anywhere and it was really fast to build. So guys, have an awesome, awesome day. I'll see you in the next one.